Well, did you have two, was it you guys two home games and one in Queensland, or how was it? Uh, oh, gee, mate, you, you, you're, testing me, you're testing me knowledge yeah. now, mate. I, I think... Uh, because we won, we won three nil in, in 86. 86, yep. So okay. in 85, when the first series, I, I don't, I'm not so sure we didn't lose the first game in Queensland. I'm yeah, so, so it was sure two in Queensland. Yeah, we got the producer in my ear. That's right. It was two. Yeah, well, geez, not, had some mighty effort. Yeah, it was. And uh, I remember, I remember coming back to, to Sydney and Steve Mortimer just emphasising about our home crowd and and our people and all that sort of stuff, doing it for New South Wales. And we we're pretty impressionable young blokes. Like we we hadn't had. A lot of experience, and just to have a leader like that that yeah. that had won premierships, and you know he was just—I don't know—it was it's hard to explain, but he's something that we need now. He just—he was a little bit older; he'd already done it all in the game, yeah. And he'd come through that real tough period of of the seventies, yep. And then all of a sudden, he, you know, he gets all of us blokes mid eighties and and teaches us how to win. I heard the story about you know the famous bus ride. Yeah. You know, Newcastle, uh, well, sorry, New South Wales blokes used to be a little bit intimidated by it, and Turvey said, get up and have a look. Get up. Enjoy it. He did. He, he wanted to enjoy it. The, uh, and I remember going pa past the Caxton and Turvey yelled out, stop the bus. They stopped the bus. And Queensland blokes on the drink, and that shout us with 5,000 cans, I reckon. But he said, start the bus as quick as he said, stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. all jumping on the bus. Now. Yeah, yeah. But the other, the other big intimidating thing, too, was playing in Queensland back in those days at Lang Park. You would be dropped off out outside the ground, and you had to walk through the members the members bar through the turnstiles into the dressing room. You reckon we didn't cop some then, Matty? Yeah, Matty block. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll throw more cans. Yeah, at us. right. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But it was, uh, mate. It was uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. The coach Terry Fernley. What yeah. kind of what what type of coach was he? Mate, uh, I, th I think he was uh, he was very staid, not over overstated. Yep. Uh, I think uh, I, I think he had the trust in in most of the blokes that were picked and that, that could do the job. He went away with Australia. Uh, uh, I think it was in eighty five. It was eighty five. Eighty five. I think it was. He dropped about six Queenslanders oh, out I, of the side. I, I Do you remember, remember that? Yes, I remember Mate, that. Mate, there was all sorts of turmoil on that tour. But yeah, um, yeah but, uh, he was yeah he was a smart bloke. He knew exactly what he wanted. He knew exactly you know, how to prepare his team. But back in those days, Matty, you know, there was only there was only the coach. A physio and a trainer. That was it. You have a look at the staff now. There's 450,000. You've got to of, have another bus for them. There's a lot of opinions. Yeah. There? Well, that's right. Yeah. And you, you know, you got to, you know, you got to, you got to take away from, you know, what you're doing with the coach and all that sort of stuff. And, but he was, um, he was quite a quiet man, understated, but very hard. He wanted you to, he wanted you to get stuck into him. Geez, his nephew is a tough bloke, Kurt Fernley. Kurt Fernley. Yeah. Yeah, isn't he? Is that his nephew, is it's it? It's his nephew. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hey, um, Block, what about, tell me you're right, in those days, like the presence of Wally Lewis. Yeah. Like what was it like, like playing against Wally? Wally, uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone like him since or, or before him. Um, Matty, to describe it, depending on what part of the game it was on, he could, he could control the game and control the narrative of the game. If a try needed to be scored, he'd score it. I don't know if you remember that game in, uh, in Sydney when he ran around everyone and, oh, and yeah. beat Gary Jack on the outside. Incredible. And everyone went, he can't run that fast. But he was that sort of bloke that just, if it needed to be done, he could do it. If they needed to pull off, uh, pull off a big hit or whatever, big front, he's a big man. Yep, yep. He's near on 16 stone, uh, Wally Lewis. If he needed to hit someone front on just to... To, to change the speed of the game or to give them a bit of a rev up, he could. Uh, he could intimidate referees. Yeah. He could talk to them, you know. And uh, I don't know. He's just a, he was just an all-round player. And all of a sudden, you know, he he sort of dictated everything that was in Origin. Yeah. I remember. Um, I remember. God rest his soul, Jack Gibson. We were playing down in. Uh, we were playing down in Melbourne, and uh, we we'd won the first game. And Jack said to me. Jack said to me, we're not going to pick you in the second game. You're fighting, uh, you're fighting all the Queenslanders. I said, mate, have you seen what they do to us? <laughs> mate, honestly. Mate, yeah. Wally would stand up and mate, Wally would stand up and fight. They were kicking us and knee us, which was yeah. which was fair game in those days. Yeah, yeah. But but we couldn't do anything back to them, you know? I, I remember a magic round going up and I uh, went to the pub catch up with Gordy for a beer or a few beers and Wally was there. And we are just sitting there talking. He's in awe. And I'm in sitting awe, there, yeah. I'm looking at him and going, I'm talking to Wally Lewis here. Yeah. I know. Yeah, fantastic. Mate, how good. Um, and even, even in... Even in I, I was lucky enough to go out in the Kangaroos with him. Mate, the back line for Australia was Sterling Lewis, Gene Miles, Brett Kenny, Rowdy Shearer, 
Mick O'Connor and Gary Jack. And he and Sterling and Lewis. Donny Ferner was the coach. Donny Ferner was, was a great bloke. I love Donny Ferner. Yep. He was the coach. He was that smart that he said, well, I'll just keep you happy. He said, Sterling and Lewis just run the show. I'd never, ever seen, like, two blokes that could run a whole game by himself. That, mate, so Donny was like, ego away. No, no, you ego boys away, just mate. Go. You blokes, I'll, I'll keep you happy off the field. We'll, you know, we'll yeah. train hard and do what we've got to do and all that sort of stuff. But but Sterling and Molly, they just ran the whole show. It says a lot about uh, Don, too, in 87 at, at Canberra. says, mate, I'm going to bring this uh, young Bennett. coach down. Wayne Bennett, go yeah. co-coach with me. Yeah. They made the grand final that year, didn't yeah. they? got beat by Manly. They yeah. did.